Hey guys, welcome to my channel Economics at a Glance. Today we will deal with the second part of price effect that is substitution effect. Well, I have told you in my previous video that is price effect is equals to income effect plus substitution effect, right? We have covered income effect. So today in this lecture we will cover what is substitution effect, okay? So let's start. Okay, so what do you mean by substitution effect? See, substitution means what change between related goods. So the definition is the change in quantity purchased of a good when there is a change in price of related good. That means how much I will change purchasing the packet of tea when the price of coffee packet has been changed. Okay, tea and coffee. Getting my point? How much I will change, uh, sorry, how much I will change purchasing tea when the price of coffee packets have been changed. Okay, so that is called substitution effect. When level of income and satisfaction is constant. Well, these are two factors. Sorry, level of real income. Okay, level of real income and satisfaction constant. Well, the level of real income constant, it is given by another scientist. Level of satisfaction will be constant, it is given by another scientist. Okay, who are they? Level of satisfaction will be constant, it is given by Hicks and Allen. And level of real income, that is our purchasing power, that will be constant, it is given by Slutsky. In theory, you came to know that substitution effect, what is the difference between substitution effect given by Hicks and Slutsky. So basically, this is the two difference. That is, substitution effect when satisfaction is constant, it is given by Hicks. And substitution effect when the purchasing power or real income is constant, that is given by Slutsky. Okay, clear? Now we will move to the concept. Just a minute. So before elaborating it, I'll give you a small example. See, suppose your income is 50 rupees, okay? Your income is 50 rupees and with this income you will purchase, let's say, uh, bread and cookies. Bread and cookies. Bread price is 15 rupees and cookies price is, let's say, 10 rupees. Fine? So you will purchase bread and cookies with your income that is 50 rupees. So what happened now you will purchase two bread and two cookies fine okay because two bread that is 30 two cookie that is 20 30 20 50 then suppose I will tell now your bread price price of bread has been decreased and now the price is 10 okay. Previously it was 15, now it is 10. What happens? Price has been declined. When price is decreased, that means we can purchase more bread. Yes or no? Why we can purchase more bread? Because the price has been declined and our purchasing power. Purchasing power has been increased. Yes or no? Purchasing power is nothing but real income. Fine. So here our real income has been increased. That is why we can purchase more amount of bread. But this is what I have explained. It is price effect. We are not about to deal with this concept now. We are about to focus about substitution effect. Yes or no? So let's just forget about this. To come to the substitution effect. So we have to make this purchasing power constant. Okay. Here our purchasing power increased, so we have increased the consumption of bread, I have told. But to come to substitution effect, we have to make this purchasing power constant. Okay, so to make this purchasing power constant, what we need to do? We will increase one commodity and decrease another commodity, so that it will balance the purchasing power into the original purchasing power. How? See. So this is example through which I have told what is substitution effect. If you want to plot in graph because in, I have already told you in this concept graph is very important. Okay. 
So here in x-axis and y-axis, let's say I will take bread in x-axis and cookies in y-axis. Okay, let's say they are operating here. Two bread and two cookies. How we know that they are operating here? The point at which the indifference curve is tangent to the budget line is called as consumer equilibrium point. I have covered this one. If still you have not seen that video, you can easily access to that video. I have mentioned the link in the description box. Okay. So you can easily go to that. Okay. Let's come here. So it is the equilibrium point here. The consumer is operating now. Okay. Now I will tell the price of bread has been declined. What happened? When the price of one commodity changes, budget line rotates. Yes or no? So here your budget line will rotate. Here, okay, let's say it is A, B, so it has been rotated to C. Now our new budget line is A, C. So what happens? We will consume more, yes or no? We will consume more, so our satisfaction will be increased also, yes or no? But this will be our price effect. So what we need to do our to make our purchasing power constant? What we need to do for making our purchasing power constant? We have to make our real earned income constant. It will not increase. That means we will decline our real income that is purchasing power. We have to make it constant means here this AC budget line. We have to make a parallel shift of this budget line where it will be tangent to our initial indifference curve. Our, in, sorry, our initial indifference curve is I see 1 and new one is I see 2. So we will shift our AC budget line in such a way that it will be tangent to I see 1. So that what happens our purchasing power will remain constant to the previous one. See. So I will make a shift of parallel shift. See what happens. Yes. So it will be B. And sorry, it will be C and D. Okay, C and D, not C, sorry, D and E. Because C already we have taken. So D and E, this is the parallel budget line which is tangent to our initial indifference curve. So now you can tell that the consumer equilibrium has shifted from point X to point Y. So what happens in this point Y? See, we have declined the purchase of cookies and we have inclined the or increased the purchase of bread. That means we are increasing the purchase of one commodity and declining the purchase of another commodity. So this increase in one commodity and decrease in another commodity Let's say it is M, it is M1. This M and M1 is here your substitution effect. Okay, this M and M1 is your substitution effect. Okay, clear how you can derive the substitution effect? Generally, you have to make your purchasing power constant. To make it constant from the increased one, you have to shift the budget line which is your new income, new real income. Okay, so shift that, you have to parallelly shift to that position where it will be tangent to the indifference curve of original one. Original is IC1 and at point Y it got tangent. So we will stop at that point. And we have seen in that point that we will consume more of one commodity and less of another commodity. That means we are substituting this part of cookies in bread. Okay. This is called substitution effect. Okay. What we have made here constant satisfaction. Okay. So this is given by Hicks. Some little bit modification done by Slutsky. See how. Let's just rub all this. Okay. Just a minute. Huh? See, the same curve.
here is your x axis here is your y axis this is your budget line okay clear in x axis we will take bread in y axis we will take cookies fine okay so at this point the consumer is operating now why because the indifference curve at this point is tangent and we are consuming two bread and two cookies okay so what he told that slutsky initially what happens like when the bread price has been declined so our budget line rotates rotates to new budget line see it is your new budget line okay that is a c initially a b so what happens when it got shifted we uh, previously we have studied that we have to shift it to a position where it will be tangent to the initial one but slutsky told that there is no need to change in the consumption of two we will consume the same commodity like two cookies and two bread only okay so see 50 rupees income we have bread and cookies we will consume bread price initially was 15 and cookies 10 rupees now bread price has been declined to 10 okay but slutsky told that you have to consume the same two bread and two cookies so what happened two bread means 20 rupees two cookies means 20 rupees so you are consuming 40 yes or no you are consuming 40 means you are left with 10 rupees so you are left with 10 rupees means your real income has been somewhat declined because you are expend, expending only 40 rupees instead of this 50. So this decrease means this budget line will shift downward. Yes or no? Downward to the position where because we are consuming the same 2 and 2 combination. So it will shift at this point. Okay. Because we are consuming at this point only. So it will shift parallelly to this point. Okay, so according to Slutsky, it will be your new budget line. But see what happens here. At this point, do you think it is a maximum satisfaction point? No. Why? Because here the indifference curve is not tangent. It is intersecting. Yes or no? So for that, what we need to do, we will plot another indifference curve. Okay, another indifference curve. So what happens? There will be decline in cookies and increase in bread. That means we cannot say that we will make the consumption of same commodity. It has to be we have to decline the commodity consumption in one good and increase the consumption of another good. But the thing is here your point A to point B this is your substitution effect. But the thing is both the curve the uh, conveyance is same. But the thing is, way of conveying the substitution effect here is quite different, okay? So, with this, your substitution effect by Higgs and Allen and Slutsky get over. In my next video, I will come with the price effect, which is the combination of substitution effect and income effect, which I have already covered. So, till then, stay with my channel and don't forget to like and subscribe my channel. Thank you.